Welcome to the Media Navigators podcast, brought to you by the World Media Group. My name is Belinda Barker, and I'm the Chief Executive. The media industry has always been incredibly dynamic, but the last six months we've seen seismic change. Today, we're going to be talking about the evolving agency model and how to build a trusted client relationship in a time of exceptional change. So I'd like to introduce you to my co-host today, Alex Delamain, the global client partner at The Economist and president of the World Media Group, and Alex Altman, who is the global client president at Wavemaker. Welcome, Alex. Thank you very much, Belinda. Um, And welcome, Alex Altman. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you? I'm well, Alex, yes. Are you surviving lockdown? Yeah, I've been surviving. In fact, I think I've been thriving. It's uh, I, I've got this. I've got the the space and the capacity to work. Wavemaker and WPP have been brilliant about everything. I was in the office yesterday for the first time in almost five months. It's uh, it's phenomenal the amount of work that the team have done to make it safe and secure. We're very much voluntary only. If you want to go in because you need the space or you're collaborating on something which is what I was doing yesterday for a couple of hours. But it was, it's eerily quiet, but I suppose it was good to, to step out of the flat and get back in the office. So you would do it again? You didn't feel too vulnerable? It just worked well? I, I didn't feel vulnerable. That an awful lot of effort. So it's, in, it's incredibly reduced capacity. So the, the worldwide team's about 200. At any one time, we can only have 32 people in. You have to book it once you've booked that space is yours for the week, even if you're only in for an hour. No one else can use it because of deep cleaning. I, it's, it's not a particularly uplifting environment, to be perfectly frank, but it was good to see the four or five people that I'd been talking through on VC. We could actually meet, distance of course, work on a deck for a couple of hours together for the first time and then disperse back. And that seemed to work really well. So for things like that, yes, I'll definitely go back in. No, I, I went in last week and it was just fabulous to have that human connectivity with people in real time rather than on a screen. I know. Uh, well, I'm glad you made it in and out safely. So we're just going to do a bit of a deeper dive, if we may, into some more um, detail around, um, you know, how it's been for you over the last few few months. And, and in terms of, you know, business and, and working with clients, what changes have you made to sort of be more um, nimble, I suppose, but also changing to the demands um, of your clients? Yeah, actually, nimble is a great word. I, I, I would I observe that the biggest biggest requirement on us, and actually we've seen clients make the same change, is that that agility, that increased requirement to make decisions quicker, mm-hmm. to be unafraid to. Uh, make a decision and then reverse it or pivot or, or change it. That that done is better than perfect, Maxim. And we, we've noticed that in our business. So actually, just before lockdown, Wavemaker had, had had rebranded and re reorganised itself around uh, provocative planning. So our whole business was changing. What we do, how we're structured, how we organised, it was all ready to go. And then, of course, lockdown hits, which has all sorts of implications. The biggest one of which was clients were asking more questions with shorter deadlines in in initially for maybe six weeks in a bit of a state of panic. Mm -hmm. So they really need you. They really need you at that point. Do you think they lent on you more? Yeah, they definitely lent on us more. It it actually helped create, uh, I would think, more uh, deeper relationships on a human level, just partly because you're seeing people in their homes with their cats and their dogs and their children. So that's, on a human level, that's great. But your point, absolutely. I think clients needed us more. There were so many questions. What are consumers doing? How should we behave as a brand? What do we do about investment? Can't we had some clients call us one day to cancel it, the next day to put it back in, and the next day or by the end of the week to pull some of it out again. There was so much back and forth. There was also such a a hunger for information. So we pivoted our entire marketing strategy in the space of 72 hours to be providing useful, curated information and intelligence to our client. And that sense of agility has really, really stayed with us. I think it stayed with clients as well. 
Yeah, they really got their true value out of um, their relationship with their agencies because, you know, your expertise shone through at a crucial time where they were possibly paralysed by what was going on fundamentally. I mean, it, it, it does create some challenge in, of moving forward, of course, is perhaps set new expectations about uh, timelines, you know, so about how long you work, how quickly you work. And what we don't want is to compromise the quality of work because th- th- there are pieces of work that just take time thinking things through, analysing data. It takes time. So we do need to be careful and we need to work collaboratively with our clients to ensure that the essence of the partnership is still solid, even if that sense of speed and agility remains. Because that's really interesting. You know, the, the, the circumstance at the time meant that demands on you went increased dramatically and you, you reacted accordingly because that's what a trusted partner does. It's not sustainable, though, to work to the degree that you are currently. So how do you get back to normal? Well, our, the, the advice that we've given to, to, to our teams and that I've given to myself is to talk openly and honestly with clients. Their world has changed. Their requirements and their needs change, probably on a professional and on just on a very human level. Everyone's been under some degree of pressure. And we, we've been having conversations. It's partly subsided, because as things revert a little back to the mean and how they were. But where the, where, where the tide has left the mark, so we've had conversations with clients, and generally they've been very positive, which is just speaking openly about the need in some instances to, to reset some of the boundaries and reset some of the, uh, the, the, sort of the, the responsibilities and expectations on both sides. Have there been any trends, um, because you're being a global client present, you're not just looking after to clients based here in the UK. Have you seen any significant differences? Are are there certain markets that are are being more bullish than than others or have required more hand-holding than others, or or, or is it pretty uniform? There are some... That there are cultural differences, societal differences, but broadly the trends actually and the patterns are, are there to be seen. There's been in terms of either media consumption, the things that you would expect, TV's gone up, Netflix has gone up, out of home cinema's gone down, things that you would expect. We've seen that uniformly. The, the time might be different and the, the quantum and the magnitude of it might be ever so slightly different. But from a trend perspective, it's the same. Then from the other side, the media investment questions about should we still invest? Is it appropriate to be advertising? If so, what message should we be putting out there? Should we be putting out a message about support and help? Or should we still be putting out a message about sales? That's been a fairly universal theme. And maybe we'll touch on this later. But this, because there's been distribution issues, so things have been shut or people can't get out, the questions around commerce and direct to consumer, we've seen that across the world. Just uh, on a different dynamic, um, kind of more internally facing, um, it, it's what what are you doing to support the young people with, within WaveMaker? I mean, I, I remember back to when I first joined the industry. Um, 99% of what I learned was through osmosis. It was, it was, you know, sitting next to people and making my mistakes and, and, and learning from others. Um, so, you know, you, <laughs> you can't really do the water cooler moment on Zoom. What, how, how are you supporting the, those people um, with their learning and I guess also to some degree their you know mental health as well you know it, it is very difficult working on on your own yeah and I, I don't think that's a, a young I don't think the quest I, I don't think that's just confined to young you know sort of uh, foundational training perhaps is to do with where you are in your career but the issues around connection and mental well-being and anxiety or perhaps just the, your personal circumstances aren't set up for homeworking. That, that, applies, that applies across all, all ages and, and all demographics. We decided very early on as a business, as I'm sure many did, just to speak frequently and to speak openly. 
with as many people as possible, uh, either and predominantly on VC, but sometimes in writing, sometimes just on the phone. So we can meet where everyone knows who their team is, everyone's a leader of a team, bring the team together frequently. Normally that means daily, so there's some sense of connection. And then everyone has a, a or everyone is part of a team to bring that team together. A lot of people also have one or two people that report to them, so their leaders connect with those on an individual basis. And the feedback on that has been great. I mean, I, I'm, I'm part of it. I'm part of a, a, a team where I'm communicating to people. I'm part of a team where I'm communicated with. And I found it wonderful. I feel a strong sense of connection. I feel a strong sense of communication. And yes, of course, we've had to share some difficult news and some challenging information at times. But broadly, the lesson is it's okay. I can take it. I just want to know that I'm being spoken to in, in, a, in an adult way, in a grown-up way, and you're, you're not hiding anything from me. So that, that's been the broad principle and direction. And there's been a whole range of support put in place. So we're, we're still training. Group M have a wonderful Group M University. So we've done a lot of training. And actually, we've been moving to doing our training remotely for a while. The reason being is that it's accessible wherever you are. So less, less frequent now is the, right, take a day off, go and sit somewhere and do a training. And more are we likely to allow people to access it in a way that suits them and in a time that's suitable for them. And there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of help and resource for working parents that are challenged with homeschooling or people who are feeling anxious about this more generally. And WPP, Group M and Wavemaker have a lot of resource and we've deployed that fully for everyone. Um, obviously, we've all enjoyed working from home um, and, and it's fascinating your point about how you fostered new relationships with clients because, as you say, you know, having a Zoom call and seeing their kids running behind them or in their own sitting room enables you to be a lot more personal with clients, which you know, helps. You know, deeper relationships means deeper partnerships, so it's great on every level. But there's got to have been some challenges that you know, came out at, you at the beginning of this period that you perhaps weren't prepared for. What would you say is, has been the single biggest challenge and how did you come, you know, come to terms with that when working with clients? The biggest challenge is so a, a lot of what we do with clients is, is in reply to a specific question and I, I don't think that's been hugely compromised. Everyone's been working at full capacity. Where, where it's much harder is when you want to sit, either you know, physically or, or, or not, but with a client and iterate together and, and work through problems and work through opportunities and arrive at solutions together. Sort of work, work, workshopping in its broadest sense. And that, that's much harder to do remotely. It's much harder to do over VC. It's impossible to do over a phone. And I'd say the one thing I'm, I'm most looking forward to when we get back to being able to travel and meet with people on a frequent basis is, is that ability just to sit there and you've got things spread out on the table and you've got your coffee and you're kicking ideas around. You're playing ideas tennis mm. and you're sort of seeing where it leads. Mm. And they're structured yeah. when you're problem solving. Very, very different experience, isn't it? And I'm moving on from that now. So you've dealt with that problem. But what's keeping clients awake at night now? You know, what's what are what's coming down the pipe? I mean, none of us really know. I mean, obviously, there's there's fear of a second wave, um, fear of you know how deep the recession is, the impact of the recession. But in the conversations you're having with clients at the moment, what, what's keeping them awake at the moment for the coming months ahead? You know, it's really dependent on the client. So we were talking earlier about themes and are there patterns and uh, amongst media behavior and media investment. And actually there are, there are much less patterns when it comes to client behavior. And that's because everyone, each of our clients is affected differently. We work with British Airways who are facing a real question of survival, an existential question, and they're having to restructure their entire business at the moment. Well, that's obviously keeping them awake. And we've got a number of FMCG clients. You know, so we work, with, uh, we work with Colgate, we work with Church and Dwight, we work with L'Oreal. Their questions are much less existential. They've got questions about uh, distribution. Are the shops open? What about duty-free for the travel retail? 
How do they continue to enhance a direct uh, consumer proposition? How much should they invest in it? And is it a short-term investment? Or do they really believe that this is that means of selling and that means of consumer engagement is here to stay? I think, by the way, most of it is here to stay. And they're, they're grappling with all those sort of questions. And then you've got everything in between. We work with Paramount. They just can't distribute a film at the moment. So they're, they're really focused not on anything to do with marketing, or very little to do with marketing and comms, but finding entirely new distribution partners. Mm. And actually, the, the common thread is that we're being asked these questions to help, and we're having to deploy a whole range of thinking and a whole range, the fullest range of our talent and tools and experience to help clients who have got a range of different uh, problems and challenges, and how can we help all of them? And it forces innovation, doesn't it? Because you have to find a different way forward. And as a consequence, you know, creativity can win through and you can start working and deploying things in ways that you wouldn't have thought about before. So there's lots of positives that come out of very difficult situations like this. They say necessity is a mother of invention. And, and it, it really is. It's forced us to, I mean, you've read many times, we've had 10 years innovation in 10 weeks or six years in six weeks, whatever it might be. People have been forced to accelerate plans that they had, or in many instances, craft entirely new plans for marketing and comms. And, and you, we see it in our everyday life. You go to the local restaurant, they've probably never done takeaway. And now they, they've changed their structure. They've built, they've taken out the window. They've built a hatch. They've built themselves a website and they're doing takeaway. And you've got queues around the streets for bagels or smoothies or, or coffee. These companies have never considered doing that, ever. But suddenly, they found a way through it. That's a great British spirit for you. Resilience. Resilience, Resilience creativity, you know, open to things, yeah. uh, supporting one another, absolutely. They're, they're, they're great British qualities. Or we're seeing it in Britain from everyone that's here. They're, they're great qualities. I'm sure we're seeing it around the world. And more to come, I'm sure. You bet. Finally, just to wrap up, coming back to Alex Altman, you've enjoyed working from home. You've, you've been brave and gone into the office and appreciated um, having that, those physical meetings again. But in terms of new ways of working, what are you going to hold on to as a legacy of this period to continue going forward? Well, firstly, I'll say behind every closed door is a personal story. So I, I'm, I'm not reflective of anyone. I'm just reflected of me. And thankfully... All my friends and my family have been safe. I've got somewhere to live. I've got space to work. Uh, and I've got great friends, family around me. So my, my story is one of I've been okay with it. And I felt quite energized in the way I've been able to work. The thing that I'd really like to hold on to, and it sort of straddles personal and professional, is in the past, things were very binary. You were in work or you weren't in work. And this has shown me that there's a much more blended way things aren't but because I know I'm home every day but I'm also working every day I've just been able to organize things and be much more dynamic in how I work and how I fit in things in my personal life go to the gym meet a friend go for a walk call my mum and dad it kind of doesn't matter what it is I can eat early if I want I don't have to wait till I get home late from work and I think that's made me more productive it's, it's given me more energy it's given me a, a fresh zest for everything that I do professionally. And as things start to open up and going to the office becomes an option, not a requirement, but an option, I've committed to myself to try as hard as I can to hold on to that because I think it ben I benefit and I think my clients and my colleagues benefit from it. So you've been quite disciplined. So it's very easy to just get up, have your breakfast, put something decent on, sit down in front of your computer, and not really leave it until sort of six, seven o'clock at night. So you, are you being quite strong-willed about making sure that you go to the gym, that you, you know, see family or friends, etc.? Because it's hard to do. Yeah, it, for me, it's happened organically. The first couple of weeks were very intense. I'm sure they were for everyone. Just get up, shower, dress. You know, mine's to walk about 10 yards to, to the kitchen, sit down, 16 hours later, do it in reverse and go to sleep. That's just how it was. That happens. We're, we're in a customer service industry and this was a seismic event. So my job was just to be there for the clients and for my team. 
but then it just took a different, it, it's had different, it's ebbed and it's flowed. I, I haven't, honestly, I haven't had to work at it. It's just sort of happened. Some days are busier than others. That's fine. Some days I'm able to carve out some time. That's fine. Sometimes I have to work on a Sunday to prepare for a Monday, but it hasn't become a, a rule. And when I do it, it's okay. And actually it's become easier because everything's just there anyway. I don't feel like I'm stepping into a work world. As I said, everyone's different. Everyone's got their personal stories. That's mine. Have you taken up any new hobbies? I, I, I feel like I should say yes, because everyone does. So I, I, you mean you've not been making sourdough? I, I'm not. Well, I've been eating sourdough. <laughs> um, I, I'm not going to claim that this is a hobby, but I did buy some herbs and I planted them. Yeah, planted them. I took them out of the pot and put them in a new pot on my terrace. So I've got some mint, some basil and some chamomile. Sounds very middle class, doesn't it? And I've used the basil, actually. Um, I've used the mint, rather, in a, in a smoothie. I've had a mint tea. had a chamomile tea, which is really quite bitter. I think you're supposed to add something to it. But it's quite nice. So, yeah, I, I go out and I tend to my herbs. Well done. Well, as much as I love speaking to you on Zoom, I can't wait to see you in the flesh. And perhaps I'll invite myself around to have a Pims and lemonade on your on your terrace with a spring of your mint. <laughs> Absolutely, out. You're welcome anytime. Thank you very much. All right, lovely to chat.